Water. Earth. Fire. Air. And the Avatar. Hello, fellow cultivators. Welcome to the second episode of Weird Views in Tale of Immortal that actually works. And you can you guessed it. This build is so-called Avatar build. And as usual, before I start to introduce how things work, I will show you a battle with me against some difficult enemy. The guy here is 35 Sun Yu from the Chiyo region. And let's see. So switch on the out. Now, and time has been slowed. It is not lag; it just slowed time. And within, in real time, five seconds less than that, Sun Yu is gone. Well, right now my out is still going on, and you can see all the four elements. And uh, I am just waiting for my out to finish because for some reason I cannot exit before my out finishes. But it will be soon. So sorry for wasting a few seconds time just looking at nothing. And now, we are coming out, 18 seconds time, if I recall correctly, it's written there, but you know it's only cost 3 seconds. <laughs> Alright, welcome back. And now it's the time for the boring part, so explain how the thing works. So, of course, the key of this build is really your ultimate. And because just like the previous episode where the Blade ultimate changes everything of your skill form. Here, it's kind of similar. The wind ultimate, this is a special one called temporary, temporal wind field. Basically, when you switch on this ultimate, you enter this bullet time mode. You literally stop the time. And that is why you can see that in my previous battle, it actually takes much longer in real life time. But the count is only 18 seconds and mainly just 15 seconds of this out time plus maybe 3 seconds of entering the battles and summon the swine. And the thing is, during this bullet time, everyone was extremely slow, but you are extremely fast. So basically you can do a lot of damage, but they do have a limit for it. The limit is you can't use your special skill. And I think, I think, which I'm not exactly sure, you can't use your motion skill as well, even though it's not really written. And all your martial slash spiritual skill will become this thing called Arctic Wind Edge. Which is not that good, it's just simply one projectile attack. So that's the whole idea of this out. However, there are two special things about this. Actually three, let's see. <laughs> so one, if you look at the eight sub skill, Arctic Wind Edge cooldown 0%. And that means you have kind of like a zero city, but in reality, not really zero city uh, martial skill. And uh, basically, you are attacking as fast as this game can. Now, fun thing about this is that the second thing about this this martial skill will inherit many sub skills, affix that the, your standard martial skill has. And uh, even though it does not really work that well when you to apply um, the buff or debuff. And instead you are looking for like sub skill, for example, the Earth one. This is why the reason why we choose a uh, Earth spiritual skill. Look at the last sub skill. This skill have 15% chance to shoot 12 soil balls at your surroundings, dealing the same amount of damage as this skill. And this sub skill is inherited. Even though you are not doing earthquake attack, you are doing arctic wind edge. But they will still shoot out self balls with 15% chance and at maximum speed. And this is why you can do a lot of damage, especially when you are standing really close to the enemy. Because that is when all the 12 balls are hitting the enemy at the same time. And you are basically 12 times your standard spiritual skill damage. So that's the two things I was talking about, right? Now the third thing, which is not super important but also helps quite some, is the fifth one. Mm. Actually, not exactly. Is it the fifth one? Yeah. No, oh, no, sorry. The last one. For the duration of this ultimate skill, every 0.5 seconds, you have 80% chance to generate a whirlwind. Yeah, I was looking for whirlwind 
<laughs> skills. And I was like, fifth one also has the whirlwind. Yeah, but that is after this ends. Eight whirlwind will be ge generated underneath you. But this is not really that important. More, more important part is the last one. During this time, 15 seconds, you have, you are generating a lot of whirlwind. And combine this with a wind mastery, which allows you your whirlwind to move faster and most importantly, chase down the nearby enemy, basically attracts the enemy. And all of the whirlwind will stay at where the enemy is and keep continuously doing damage. And this is basically how in general wind build works. You are building up a lot of uh, heat frequency by the whirlwind. And this does help you damage a lot. All right, we have talked about the ultimate and the, the spiritual skill at this time. So the next question is, like when you are using a mixed up different kind of skills, how are you going to make them work? And the answer is, first of all, of course, the standard way that makes a build work in this game that you apply a buff debuff you, with your spiritual skill and then you denote the debuff debuff with your special skill won't work anymore. That's there. And uh, a different way is like many of the other builds, for example, lightning. You can use a motion skill to apply those buff and debuff, and and then you still use your special skills to denotate it, or at least enjoy the benefit with those buff debuff. Well, those also can't work here. How? That's why you want to choose something that, which is the effect is not really affected much by the buff or debuff. And this is why we choose um, a water special skill, especially this one, Frost Brand. And uh, of course, a variation of this build is actually use a lightning special skill, a lightning motion skill, combined with standard lightning secret manual and lightning mastery. And uh, there is a showcase in my channel about that variation called Bullet Time, something like that. And unfortunately, nobody really likes it, but myself really likes this build a lot. Anyways, now I might talk more about that build later in this video, but currently let's focus on the, this variation, so using water and fire. So the whole idea, of course, you first have fire motion, which is generate fairy flames, and combined with a standard fire secret manual, you have the damage amplification. So that is there that I don't need to talk about it anymore, I think. And if you do not understand, you can check out other videos, especially the general damage guide one. Now, for the special skill, the reason I choose water, there are several things. First of all, any kind of charge skill of water will generate this energy pond, right? So energy pond is an effect where if you stand inside this pond, you, you can look at it from the right side here. Your spiritual skill and your special skill will increase 50% damage, so that's another nice damage boost. And also it reduces skill charging time, which is not that relevant for this build because you can't use your special skill anyway during the out. This means you have to use your special skill before you switch on the out, which is good because Frost Brand is a continuous damage. So as long as you have already switched it on, it will continue doing damage during its duration time. And uh, that this is why even though you are not using it in most of the time during when you switch on your out, this, the previously summoned this uh, ice storm is still dealing damage. And uh, another good thing about energy pond is more like it's supposed to be a drawback. Is that every time when you're casting skills, even with spiritual skills, we usually cost nothing. If you're standing on energy pond, it will cost you mana, which sounds a bad thing. However, it's also a good thing because any skill you cost in mana, which with a correct guide so energy manual you can gain shield and since you are having maximum speed dealing using your spiritual skills to dealing damage you are generating shield at the maximum speed so it makes yourself actually much safer as well because even though you are make the boss super slow during this time they are still moving functioning and doing damage so with a shield makes you safe and Sometimes shield, you might think shield is not enough, not enough. Here is another thing. <laughs> While you are using Frost Brand, 
even though without the debuff of the water, it can still have a 12% chance to, in, to freeze enemies. Look at the last shop skill here. And this is one of the special skills which does not need the buff or debuff to freeze. And that makes it very good for this build when you do not have a spiritual skill to apply the debuff. And uh, so, this one does help your damage by the energy point and help you survive by the freeze and shield generation. And fire motion is always best damage dealer. And I think that's basically the whole idea behind this build with earth, fire, water, and air, let's say wind, <laughs> as an avatar build. Now, looking at the mind skills, I've already talked about wind mastery for the tracking of your wing and fire secret mana towards fire damage amplification, then you don't really need something else. That's why you choose a standard Fist Divine Power combined with Rushing Thunder, which allows you to stun enemy multiple times so that to increase your critical damage. Again, this is just common sense at this point. And of course, just mentioned you want a shield guide, not only in this field, but in general, as long as you're not using blood energy. You always want a shield guide. Then arrows, other things, just standard stuff, you know, move, sutra, and uh, technique. And of course, <laughs> compendium, which is not that useful, but you know. And now it's time to talk about um, Rewrite Destiny and Reborn Bird. These two are actually important in this build. So, first of all, let's talk about Reborn Bird. You should always use, I don't know why the bird is showing this one, maybe it's a bug. So, you should always use Miemon, and in this build, it's, this is because, as you can probably imagine, the build only works when you switch on the out. And the out have a cooldown and duration time. So what are you going to do during this cool, cooldown? You want to reduce the cooldown as much as possible. And the way to do it is use this Miemon bird, which basically is nether power. Once you switch it on, it will shoot out certain lightning orbs bouncing around, and each bouncing will reduce the cooldown of the out for one second. And that's really great. Now, one thing about Miamong is, usually I don't like using it. It's because when you switch on your laser power, you can't use your martial slash spiritual skill anymore. During that time, you lose a lot of damage. Because this lightning boss, yeah, it deals some damage, but it's not that great. However, however, the test fi during the test final, even though you are during a nether power phase, you have this lightning bolts bouncing around. If at this time you switch on your mm, out, you can still attack. So your uh, spirit skill still become the maximum speed arctic wind age, and you can still generate all these earth balls. So me and and this build works perfectly together. You literally covered the problem of me and and me and also covered the problem of this build. So that is quite important. And now for Rewrite Destiny, here's the time. So one, you obviously need combat expertise wind lightning to in order to cast you out. Otherwise you can't cast you out without preconditions. Apart from this, I would say most other things just to make this build better instead of essential. Like uh, for example, you probably always want blood power to for lifesteal even though you have all the shield and freeze you know in chaos sometimes you still need this thing and then everything else is just standard good you know uh, set destiny like conceal nirvana for defense murderous rise for attack and uh, arctic dowry perfection so this one it increase your martial skill damage by 25 percent usually it's kind of mad but in this build as you know most of the damage coming from that earth balls and 25 percent increase does apply to it and it, it's great and by the way this is very bad translation because judging from this translation you can't even imagine actually increased damage of your martial skill but the chinese word is makes sense and uh, then yeah there's this what else yeah always someone better again Always a good build, a good destiny. Clouds Pierce Lightning. In general, good, but also it feels like, yeah, if you want maximum 30%, you actually need a lot of uh, agility. Like, I don't know, 9,000 ish, if I'm not wrong. Or oh, 30,000. <laughs> anyway, 
The point is, during your out time, you are become very faster, and you have the sub skill to generate make your agility even faster. So you are using all the full thirty percent damage amplification for this destiny as well. And what else? Supernova sword. Surprisingly, during all my other tests, this is the one that increased damage the most. I guess during this five, fifteen seconds, all this. Rotating sword are still doing damage. Now, here is the interesting thing: conflagration. This is a one of the few destiny that only appear once you reach, I think, reborn transcendent. And in general, they are not that great. However, this is actually quite useful in this build. So what it does is, after dealing damage for three times, your next attack will jet shoot out a fireball and generate so-called field of flame here, but it's actually fairy flame. You might be thinking, okay, just one fairy flame. How does it matter? It's like eight percent. However, the point, it's perfect, perfectly fits in in the play style of this build. And I must, I will first explain here, and, and I will show you an example of the play style, maybe in the martial martial、uh, arena. So the idea is you use your special skills, generate energy pong. You use fire motion to generate fairy flame, then you switch on your out. And starting from here, your fairy flames only last for five seconds, and it's already passed nearly half. And if that is the case, even though the five seconds become very long during this during this bullet time, but still you run off the time, you know, in the middle. However, if you have this out, have this destiny, it will generate another fairy flame and refresh. The five seconds limit, which basically allows you to keep the fairy flame damage amplification all the time during your out, and that dramatically increases the damage of yours. And in fact, if you remember, we have talked about a different、uh, variation. Basically, use lightning. So you are going to use lightning cloud again because it's a, a duration time a special skill and lightning motion with a lightning secret menu. In general, lightning does not have as good damage as fire. However,、uh, in general, so when people are talk discussing about this build online, they would and testing, they find out that if you put the time scale into longer, lightning might be actually better than the fire version. It's because lightning damage amplification lasts for a total one minute instead of five seconds. And、uh, that is actually so the lightning bolt damage amplification. So. Basically, during the one minute, you are your damage become higher and higher, and fire only last five seconds, and you you can't really refresh it, and that makes the lightning sometimes even better in the long term. However, with this thing called conflagration, you are really fully use all the fairy flames during the this time、uh, out time, and that actually dramatically increase your damage. Basically, you can probably Kill everything in this game within one out time. So in a way that you don't even need to use Miamon to <laughs> to reduce the out anymore. Of course, when you have it, it's always good. But with the conflagration, and if you do the thing correctly, you actually do so much damage that you in one out fifteen second time you kill everything. As you can see, that thirty five swan yu is nothing in front of it. And I will just、uh, show you what to do. So. Marshall's guy right now. Fire motion. This. This. And. Oh god, conflagration just happened. You are very fast, so very be very careful when moving. <laughs> you need to move really close to the target in order to have maximum DPS. And you can see my DPS is increasing very fast. The problem is I have been roaming around too much, so it's not as fast as it could be. The best DPS I can deal with is around like say 10 million. Now I can use this and switch on my laser power. So this, I'm going through this, and every time it bounces around, you can see that my this is recovering much faster than it should be. Now I can use this again, use fire motion, and use the out again. So. You can see that it's only a few seconds time, and if I used my 
special skill during this time, its end target will be freezed, and you are kind of safe. Now, you need to target, make this thing more, let's say, do the actions in the correct order to maximize the damage. But you don't need to, like, even if you didn't do it correctly, the conflagration, the new fireball didn't hit it at the correct time, then it's still okay. It's still quite good. Now, I want to show something because it's not clear what are those. So, I, first of all, when I'm using this, you see this blue thing? That is energy pump. And there is this target uh, thing here. And while I am in energy pump, let's now switch back on the nether feathers. Now, let me generate energy pump. And look at here, I'm not doing anything. And you can see my energy is draining. So this is when standing on the pole without doing anything, just normally attacking, you are draining your energy and after generating shield. And you can see my shield is generating a lot. So just one thing to show. The second thing to show uh, is actually this requires a mode. This mode is basically allows you to show the how much fairy flame you have. So I generate this and you can see there are 22. This icon and tells you 5 seconds, it will be going gone. And when you conflagration, that new fireball hits the enemy, it will refresh this thing and it will become 23. So this mode is actually quite good to help you to know the timing, but it is not really changing any gameplay. Just remember that. Alright, and don't forget when you switch on this ultimate, you should use your Russian Thunder to hit to uh, stun the enemy so that increase your crit damage rate and because you target everything perfectly you would see Sorry, just do it again. You would see This murders rise switching on at the same time and you really want to maximize this time because you want to have five times guaranteed crit and This is basically makes your DPS much higher and you can literally obligate any enemy during your one out time, if you are standing close enough. All right. And right, I didn't mention before I actually show you this example that in order to see the icon, it's better to use that mode because that does grant you the ability to see how long your fairy flame lasts. Because it's quite important that you know that you are with the fairy flame damage amplification or not and for me it is actually strange that the developer team never put in an icon in the original game to show you this very important thing but anyways and uh, just a disclaimer that mode does not change anything of the base game apart from showing you visually the icon in case anyone was thinking no you need mode to play this game it's not original game, original game anymore no it's not you can still get this build in the original game, but you just need to sort of remember how long your uh, fairy flame lasts. And same thing maybe goes with energy pond icon. I'm not sure if that is in the base game or not. And uh, right, right. Forgot to mention this. You want a Gochen so. And I think you know why, because when you stand in the energy pond, your even normal uh, attack drains out your, your energy and Without Goshen, so you will be soon out of your MP. I think that would be covers everything. All right. So I will end this uh, video by some videos. End sorry, end it by some battles against several immortals, not the King Lu Hua. And uh, this is because you know damage limit and enemies uh, pain to deal with in general. You can break those things by sword have any art. However, this requires you to immediately switch or use your maximal damage after you use this. And it is actually a pain in this case it's because you need a certain actions in this build. Like you need to use your special skills, use your motion skill, use your out at the correct timing to maximize the effort. And every time you, I use Sword Heavenly Art, my game freeze for a few seconds, especially in the three Immortals battle. So in the end, I could not maximize to show this uh, this build, to show you how it's supposed to work. I mean, I have tried to use this build against three Immortals a few times, 
every time it takes me like five to six minutes to finish the battle. It's, and I can see why, it's because every time I use some heavenly skill, I cannot to you know do the correct action in time to deal maximum damage in that few seconds uh, time range where you are allowed to break the damage limit. So. That is the problem. I guess someone with a better computer can maybe recreate the thing and make it better. But that's how it is. Anyways, I think that would be it. As, as usual, thank you for watching. And if you like this content, please consider leave a like or subscribe. And or subscribe, sorry. And as usual, I will see you next time.